guys, welcome to another interview. Today is very special because my guest, well, how, how can I describe him? Uh, he bought his father's company in uh, 1969. He turned it into one of the biggest uh, shipbuilding companies in the world. He, he bought the Galatz shipyard back in 99. He actually bought Mangalia last month. His net worth is 1.5 billion euros and some call him the Henry Ford of shipbuilding. Ladies and gentlemen, Komer Damen. Mr. Damen, thank you for being on the show today. Yeah. Uh, first of all, congratulations on acquiring Mangalia. That's, yeah. that's a big and bold acquisition. I, th I, I, hear it's, I hear it's your biggest shipyard, the biggest shipyard that Damen owns. Yeah, it is in, in, in facility. And, uh, and and area, it is big, the biggest shipyard in the group. Uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. It's because uh, this is part of the investments that Holland as a country uh, does in Romania uh, through Damen and through other other companies. Not, not a lot of people know this, but Holland is one of the biggest investors mm. in the country. And I want to get to that uh, later on in, in the interview, but uh, I want to start with a little, a little bit of history. Damen as a company. It was founded in um, 1927 yeah. by your father and your uncle. Yeah. And uh, it was a small boat building company that uh, s slowly grew and grew. And in 69, you actually, you bought it from your father because you had an idea of uh, producing ships in a new way, in a new way that was revolutionary at the time and uh, in which nobody else did it. Can you tell us about uh, the, yeah. this, this part? Yeah, the, 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 the shipbuilding is of course a very uh, ancient, ancient industry, eh? old yes. industry. Uh, I mean, Noah were already uh, are the first shipbuilders <laughs> yeah. in the world. So. The Ark. Uh, yeah, the Ark. And, uh, and like what you see, it is also a very mature business. So it is very difficult to make money in building ships because you have a colleague who is almost as good as you are. Mm -hmm. uh, they all, everybody tries to make uh, the best ship and mm -hmm. uh, in the more, most uh, economic way. And then, you know, prices are more or less the same and you uh, you have to make. Uh, you have to be very yeah, lucky to make some margin and to to to, to make it uh, make it uh, a stable financial stable uh, company. My family was quite uh, lucky. I think uh, that that was uh, doing financially reasonably good. But you saw already uh, sometimes you uh, you uh, had the difficulty to get these contracts and uh, and to make money on. So I thought if you if you build ships in in series or in in or in, uh, in serial production, you build a ship cheaper. Uh, you can have, uh, if, when you build this in a, in your own, on your own risk, uh, you start the production on your own risk, like you do with, uh, with a car, and then you have a shorter delivery time, uh, and you can also improve on the quality of the ship because you can uh, put much more uh, uh, time and, uh, and money in the in development of a, of a, of a vessel. So, I made a plan in the family that uh, we should uh, build a small boat. We built what the company was building to make uh, have holes in stock, to have engines in stock, propulsion uh, units in stock, so that you could uh, assemble uh, a, a boat in a very short time and make it cheaper mm. and uh, also better. Now, that was a lot of a lot of financing involved in that plan, and so my uh, father and my uncle, my cousin, uh, was also who was also active in the company said, "Okay, this is a very risky plan uh, of this young uh, boy." So uh, we, do, we don't uh, we don't go for that. So they, everybody denied it, and then uh, my uh, uncle and father said we better split up the company because uh, we have such a big disagreement of how to continue the company between my cousin and myself, and uh, that uh, they s decided to split up the company. So my uncle and cousin kept, continued with two shipyards out of the uh, family uh, yard. My father kept the oldest one and the carpeting factory. And then after he split up, he said, okay, I don't agree either with your ID. So you better buy the company and, uh, and go on your own. And uh, then you don't, uh, you don't have to make all our good personnel mm -hmm. uh, the victim of your risky uh, ideas. So give them the chance to go with your uncle and uh, cousin. So we all left and I stayed with seven people. Only seven people? Yeah, and uh, six and myself. <laughs> and uh, and a yacht uh, which I bought, but I have no money, so I adapt to my father. So that was a little bit the start of Dami Shipyards in 1969. Because your idea was actually to build um, uh, ships in a modular way. Yeah. And for the first time you introduced this idea yeah. and now is the industry standard. 
which is, I mean, basically you single-handedly revolutionized all the shipbuilding industry. And um, this, I think this takes uh, a certain kind of personality, uh, a certain kind of uh, a person to be this bold and to mm. believe in, in his ideas with such uh, conviction that he was, I mean, only six people wanted to come with you in your company and the company was how big at the time? Yeah, very small. We started to, so when when the, the the family company was about eighty people, eighty zero people, so uh, it was a very small company. It was it was also small ships, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the idea is not only a, a modular building, but also building a series on your own risk. So you can uh, have a continuous production, an uninterrupted production of one mm -hmm. uh, ship type. So that was the, the real idea. So that you could come to a shorter, uh, shorter delivery, delivery times, times and also uh, lower cost price. I have been helped in that, in that moment by uh, a, a, a guy who I knew from the uh, business from my father. He was a broker, mm -hmm. a ship broker, and he financed the whole project because they had no money also. So wow. I, I had to have, you have to have luck uh, to start. Uh, you can have a good idea, but if you don't have the luck that you have su sufficient uh, support to get it off the ground, then you mm -hmm. don't succeed. So startup is very dif difficult. You have also have been starting up. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I have a startup as well, uh, and uh, I know uh, how difficult it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you want to invest in a media company, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mr. Sure, Mr. Sure. Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, so you studied out at Delft University. Yeah. And uh, during your studies at uh, at Delft, you heard about uh, Galat Shipyard, yeah. which was at the time one of the most powerful in Europe, and it, it inspired you. And uh, when the, the the communist bloc, when the communists fell in Romania, you started looking towards uh, this particular shipyard, yeah. which was, in, in my opinion, a very risky and bold move as well, because you know you, you have this. Uh, ex-communist country with instability in the mm. economics and politics and uh, you decided to invest in Galatia. Mm. Why did you do that? So tell us about how, how we went, the, the investment or... Yeah, so, we, so what, we, what we already did during the communistic time is buying uh, Hulls Cascos in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, uh, in, uh, this, in, our, my, in my production scheme we could, so uh, a Casco was a part of for the small boats was a part of the of the it was a component. Mm -hmm. So I bought these uh, in Poland during the uh, communist time already, and uh, and then after the fall of the uh, communism, uh, I we have we already uh, bought a yard in Poland from the government. And that was even impossible. We made a deal with the city of Gdansk uh, that the area was given to Damen. Uh, if we should guarantee the employment of all the people we're working on that on that premises, which we did and and and, and also uh, grew li later on, so we thought we have to continue uh, uh, shipbuilding in Eastern European countries because this is at a lower cost price than mm -hmm. building in in Holland, and we <coughs> were exporting on uh, on the worldwide market and we had to compete with uh, other upcoming countries in the uh, in the shipbuilding market like for instance uh, China. Mm. And uh, so uh, Romania, uh, now uh, as I learned already at school, uh, was, was a big uh, shipbuilding country in the communistic time, uh, specifically for uh, the bigger uh, type of vessels. So we started to build with Galatz uh, cascos for cargo vessels to be finished in Holland. So we subcontracted them to Galatz and brought them to Netherlands to finish them. This was quite successful, very top quality uh, and very pleasant way of working together with the Galatz uh, management. So uh, then in the end of the uh, of 1989, uh, 1998, uh, the Romanian government decided to privatize uh, shipbuilding industry. So uh, all shipyards in R Romania came for sale mm -hmm. and so we, we, we negotiated to buy Galatz, which was uh, not so bold because we had a very good experience already with Galatz. And then we decided, uh, uh, when we bought Galatz, to build complete ships uh, uh, fully equipped in Galatz and to go to a more different portfolio. So more uh, complex uh, ships, like military ships, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, very complex ships for the offshore oil industry. We also build now yachts in, in Galatz. So Galatz is a very versatile, uh, high-end uh, uh, shipyard at the moment. And uh, you employ a lot of people in Galatz, and uh, the Romanian welders from the Galatz shipyard, they won international welding 
prizes and yeah. they're very proud of what they do. Yeah. So that was, it was a big, very big contribution to the local economy in, in this perspective. And now you acquired Mangalia. What's the plan for Mangalia? Yeah. It's, it's big. So we, we, we slowly grew the company by uh, extending our product portfolio. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we see a big market uh, for uh, cruise ships mm -hmm. and, and uh, row pack vessels, big ferries in the world. Yeah? For, for, for passengers and, uh, and cars. Yes. And uh, we build that also in Galatz, but our uh, facility in Galatz is limited. Limited by the draft of the Danube, uh -huh. uh, limited by also our facilities. And we are looking for, uh, for extending our building uh, facility for bigger and larger vessels. And uh, no, we, can, we, can, we can build a new yard ourselves, which is very, very costly. And we can try to buy a yard. So we have been uh, looking at uh, the yard in Mangali already a long time ago uh, and uh, discussed with the 51% owner, which is uh, Daewoo up till yeah. this moment. So we, I visited uh, the yard uh, one and a half year ago again. I already visited the yard uh, before uh, several times. And then uh, we uh, offered to Daewoo uh, to buy the yard. And then we started to negotiate with Daewoo to buy the yard. In the meantime, we had to discuss uh, with the Romanian government because they were 49% owner mm -hmm. and had the uh, right to match any offer of any other on the 51% owned by the Korean uh, company Daewoo. And so we had to deal with the Romanian government and they said, okay, we like to uh, be at least a majority shareholder of uh, our dual uh, industry. But the management <coughs> is with them. But the management of the dam. It took some time to negotiate the conditions because you have to be very careful if that you make sure that you have uh, you can be deciding on production issues uh, when you are managing the shipyard. This is done in I think a pleasant way. We have negotiated this with the mm -hmm. Romanian government, and we are there very uh, grateful for them that they give us also the confidence that we can uh, make uh, a success of the Mangalia shipyard for this new. Uh, ship types to be built there. Um, the defense industry, I mean, you, Daman builds a variety of, of ships from uh, small towing boats to yachts to military yeah. vessels. And uh, in the defense industry, it seems to imply a different shipbuilding process. How did you start working in this particular industry with uh, combat boats or military yeah. vessels? Now, so, uh, several ship types which we are building in our portfolio, we totally developed new mm -hmm. uh, diamond. Military ships, of course, is a very different business. That you, uh, you need a lot of experience because uh, a military ship is to be built to fight a war or, or, have, or every other uh, military incident. So you have to be better uh, with your equipment uh, with, uh, than, your, than your competitor. So we, uh, that's very difficult to develop that. Uh, we, so we developed fast boats within Diamond. Uh, we also sold them as patrol boats, but really military ships, uh, fighting warships, uh, was, di was very difficult to develop if you have no co contract for that. And you don't get a contract if you have no experience. So what we did, we took over the Dutch uh, state-owned uh, military shipyard here in Old, called, called Schelde, a very reputable, uh, uh, long-time military shipyard building high-end uh, ships for NATO. Uh, and we took over this yard and we introduced also the modular concept of uh, building these ships uh, for military purposes. So more efficient, uh, lower cost price, so we could export them and made it a big success. And also to reduce our cost price for military export, we uh, have built uh, many of these vessels now in, uh, in Galatz. So Galatz is a top military ship builder on this moment already for exporting outside uh, Romania. You said about, you said something about yachts. And um, when I did, when I studied Damen and uh, its portfolio, um, and the people I spoke to, I spoke to with Vadim yesterday. Okay. Had a very co cool conversation. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. Uh, and he told me about uh, your yacht uh, producing techniques. Um, until now, people were buying yachts for their size. And um, for some reason, Daman said, no, we're not gonna do a yacht bigger than, I don't know, 100 and something feet. Yeah. And, uh, and people said, well, why not? Because there are uh, uh, companies that build like mega, super, giga yachts. Why don't you build? And 
you came with an innovation here as well. You introduced what it's uh, what we call today support ships yeah. for the yachts. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about. I mean, yeah. it's better coming from you than from me. Yeah. No, so we, we uh, that's also a yacht we acquired uh, in 1992 called Amels, and we still bring our yachts on the market yeah, on the uh, in the on the in the brand name of Amels. <laughs> Uh, which is absolutely top brand in the in the market, and we built almost the largest uh, yachts in the world, but not the largest, uh, because many time uh, you have to extend a, uh, a ship a, a yacht hmm. because you need uh, extra helicopter or you want to have uh, extra small boats to bring all your people ashore or. Uh, uh, ski jets or, uh, or yeah, yeah, some or a submarine sometimes, yeah, a small submarine or uh, <laughs> a small a, submarine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, so we then we came to the idea, but then you have to, to extend the yacht, and the yacht is a very expensive uh, thing. So then we came to the idea: you better can keep your yacht uh, uh, of the size you you like it, more cozy, mm -hmm. uh, also a little bit smaller that you can then you can enter smaller ports, which is also nice. If you always have to go outside the port for anchor because you are too big for the port. It's not always nice, but then you have to go with, have to, with small boats to the shore or with a helicopter. A helicopter, uh, most of the bigger yachts have a helicopter uh, service possibility, but the helicopter on board is a very is a hassle because every time the helicopter comes down, it is a lot of wind, so everybody has to go inside. You cannot uh, continue to sit uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, to read, read your paper, for instance. We also, I'm, I'm, I'm from the generation reading papers, not always on, on, uh, everything on iPad. <laughs> uh, so, um, then, uh, so we came to the idea if you have a your support ship, you can bring there all your uh, tools uh, and toys, uh, like uh, uh, small uh, tenders and a helicopter, and a helicopter hangar, you have your own helicopter heli uh, landing. Mm -hmm. And so you take with you your own, uh, all your service. And also, it, these boats are faster than the yacht, so when the yacht leaves, they, they, they clear all the things on the shore sometimes, and they go to another place. Uh, and take already the reservation for the anchor place for the yacht. Uh, so that was a, a big success. And as far as I heard, it's actually cheaper. In totally, it's much cheaper than having a, than extending your yacht, yeah, making the, making a bigger yacht. So you did it again. You yeah. you revolutionized yacht <laughs> yeah, building yeah, as well. What's right. next? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah. uh, it's very interesting. You said, um, I mean. There are a lot of industries today that need to adapt to the new times. Yeah. Um, everything's changes, changing around us, from the way we uh, smoke cigarettes with these new electronic devices to the way we drive our cars, or mm, better said, the way we don't drive our cars anymore. Mm. Uh, the media industry with uh, the um, rise of YouTube and the internet and platforms like this, all the industries seem to go through big, big changes in this, in this period. And it's an adapt or die situation. Yeah. Um, and yet there are some uh, industry leaders, they don't adapt. Do you remember the Nokia telephones? Yeah. You know, like 10, 15 years ago, yes. they, had, they had monopoly on the phone making yeah. business and now yeah. they're no more because they didn't adapt. Um, What's your take on all this? No. I mean, as, as an entrepreneur and as a person who actually revolutionized uh, a part of uh, big industries in the world, what's your take on all this change that's going on yeah. with industries today? Of course, yeah, this, is, this is not an industry where you can be so disruptive as, you, as has been uh, done, for instance, in telephones, but also in, uh, in, in photography and all these things, like Kodak. Uh, Kodak, yeah, yes. So uh, that's, I mean, I, I, I don't expect something disruptive like that in the in our industry. I, in the end, we built a, we built a big uh, floating thing, mm -hmm. which uh, which is transporting uh, goods or doing any other function on the water, uh, and uh, or transporting people. So, of course, disruptive is like an airplane is a, is a disruptive uh, introduction for uh, a passenger ship. Yes. Right? For instance, in the past you had big passenger ships uh, crossing the ocean, and now you go by plane. Right? The same is with ferries, and the same is also a tunnel, and the bridge is also uh, a disruptive uh, introduction uh, for having a ferry. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you, know, you could have maybe pipelines for, instead of going with cargo around the uh, world, pipelines for containers, but you know, I don't see that yet. So I think, you're right, you have to be careful watching around you that, there's some, that someone can come Come with a totally disruptive idea. But I don't see that so much. But uh, so, we, but we, we, we are certain, certainly on our on our uh, we, are, we are looking around very well, 
is there, is there any disruptive energy? But we see also totally new activities on the water, like, for instance, uh, cruise ships. If you ever uh, take uh, a holiday on a cruise ship, you'll see that it's very comfortable, it's very adventurous, it's very cost effective, effective and, and a lot of people in America you, uh, that started, and now in Europe you see that uh, coming, a lot of people, and the Far East also, uh, go to a cruise and they continue and they go the next time, they tell to their friends and they also mm -hmm. go on a so cruise ship business, it's a huge growing business in all sizes, so we want to be part of that. So that's new activity on the water. Agriculture of fish in, in water is a new activity that we build ships for. So a lot of new things are also there. It's not mm -hmm. only, uh, there's a danger that you, uh, that the part of the shipbuilding uh, will be uh, taken away by something else, but it's also something new. Yachts is also a growing market. There, are, uh, uh, there is a big rise in electric ve vehicles. I saw some electric airplanes uh -huh actually flying around from companies like Pipistrel. Um, is there any chance of building electric ships? We're building now two electrical, uh, total 100% electrical ferries for Canada. 100% electric? Yeah, building a lot. Uh, so we see that uh, for specifically for uh, a ferry type of uh, ships, because they are mostly oper many times operating in, <coughs> in a city type area, city area, urban areas. Urban areas. Then you uh, so they get also a, a demand for no uh, no emissions. Uh -huh. So that in the end you have short distances, so you can charge the batteries. For long distances, I don't see that because then you need really a fuel uh, as a as a as, uh -huh. as a as a way of en uh, taking energy. But for but small distances, it's, it's feasible, yeah. it's doable, and it's happening Absolutely. right now. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, it's is, happening. So yachts. Uh, from from towing boats to yachts to combat ships to electric ferries. Yeah, yeah. What's what's next for Daman? Yeah, there's cruise ships. Huh? Cruise ships, yeah, yeah. which will be built in Mangalia. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Uh, I want to go to the Q and A now. I have yeah. some questions for you okay. for the uh, people online uh, in Romania. Kaz Potter Pungro uh, wants to ask you if you like cars and if you do, what's your favorite car? Well, I'm not so much a car fan. I, 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 I see it as a transport vehicle. I have a Audi uh, A8. I saw it outside. It's nice. <laughs> That's it's my, nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so not a very spectacular. Not a very uh, car guy. No, no. My son is. <laughs> Your son is. Yes. I have another question. Vlad Herla, he says, um, if what's your take on the concept of autonomous ships, like drones? Well, I think they will come. Uh, so they uh, drones as a military uh, ship, they will, this may, might be the first. But there's certainly, uh, I mean, uh, technically, you can already uh, we can already deliver autonomous ship, uh, which brings cargo from uh, Far East to here or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is technically already possible. Then, of course, you had a lot of security issues uh, and 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 rules, so regulation has to change uh, first. So we have now a project in Holland for the uh, uh, subsidized by the, by European Commission for a, a, a total ad autonomous autonomous uh, uh, cargo ship between the north of the Netherlands to Rotterdam as main port and that uh, that is going coming off the ground to build to be built next in the next uh, years to come so totally autonomous, totally autonomous yeah. no crew no crew wow yeah that, wow that's that's awesome but that's scary at the same time wow but it is really autonomous sir. it is not it is not uh, remote a remote, of course, is called is, is not is much more easy. Mm -hmm. Remote control ship. But this is this is different. This is this is totally autonomous. Goes on their own. Because mm -hmm. remotely means it that you has can that you sit at home and that uh, that you have a, a controller. Uh, a controller, and you can you can you can, uh, you can uh, sail with uh, ten ships. Mm -hmm. Remote controlled. Yeah. Cosmin uh, wants to know what we are doing. As a teenager, when you were 13 years old, I mean, yeah. I knew you grew up when uh, after after the war, yeah. um, Rotterdam was Bob. turned to rubble yeah. after the war. Yeah. So how was how was it growing up in this in this situation yeah. that period? Uh, it was a very optimistic time because it, uh, Holland was f partly uh, destroyed. Rotterdam was totally destroyed, but so the whole infrastructure was destroyed. So it had to be my father. Uh, having a small shipyard, he had to build uh, new boats for everybody. So it was a very optimistic time. Everything you took on as an entrepreneur was successful, almost. Mm -hmm. huh? So it was an optimistic time, but poor, very poor. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the roads were not paved. Uh, uh, it was a very poor time. And the end, you had to, as a child, you had to work uh, in the family. I mean, uh, a, a son of a farmer had to work at the farm. 
my, fa my father had also a small garden for vegetables and all that. So I had to work in the garden, which I didn't like at all. Oh, really? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 but also on the, on the shipyard, uh, that what I liked very much to help a little bit with uh, cleaning and uh, painting sometimes. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, and then what I did is playing on the river with my friends. We were swimming on the river. And so this, we, this is the main Rhine uh, river here, mm -hmm. where, our, our, where I lived. So we had a small boat, we were rowing we were to the other side, swimming to the other side, sailing. We made our own sailing boat. Uh, uh, so that was a little bit my, my use. And I have been sailing. You've made all. your own sailing boat life with your, yeah, with your hands. Was, uh, yeah, it's a very primitive one, but we could sail, you know. Nevertheless, it no, was yeah, a sailing yeah, boat. Yeah, wow, yeah. Vlad has a very long name. I'm not, I'm not going to read it. Uh, he wants to know if you could change something in the world, what could it? What would it be? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, I, 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 I believe in ver in open borders uh, for uh, capital, but for, for goods and also for people. I think okay, I should, I should, uh, I should promote that uh, because I think that also that will uh, bring uh, countries which are in poverty to more uh, wealth. Yeah, it's just uh, opening our borders for, for African uh, agricultural goods, for instance, and all these things should uh, really uh, <coughs> help uh, developing countries to become more developed. Uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of things are already changing to the good, I think, in the world. I mean, uh, uh, racism is, is, not, is less than it was before, I think. Uh, 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 genders are accepted. I mean, this is, this, uh, I'm, a, I'm a liberal. I like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people to to be as they are and mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm. accepted as they are and to be respected as they are and to, and to, and having also free movement a free movement of course of people is a very hot uh, topic today i see the difficulties we have in europe to uh, to accept uh, people from outside uh, i think it can be done but in increments people need to get used yeah, to this yeah. new way of living because if you introduce something new very very sharply people will usually yeah. get scared yeah. but yeah that's very interesting one more question Three advices you would give to a young entrepreneur. Yeah, this is my first thing is uh, you, need, you, need, you need to have a good idea. You can do whatever you like, mm -hmm. but if the idea is not good, then you uh, that's it's useless. Yeah? So a good idea. Yeah, good idea. Uh, then uh, look for uh, help, and if the idea is good, stick to your idea. Don't deviate too mm -hmm. much. So have a good plan. Look for help, help, and stick to your plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very pragmatic. Yeah. <laughs> and Costi85 wants to know how many ships you build in a year? About 200. Yeah, I think that's about it. Ballet. I, yeah. I find it very cool that you like ballet. Yeah. What's your favorite play? Uh, so the fa my favorite uh, choreographer is uh, Yuri Kilian. Okay. He was a leader of the Netherlands Dance Theater for many times, and he was an absolute top uh, choreographer. And he and he pl and his plays is uh, Sinfonietta, uh, uh, Psal Psalm Symphony, all these plays from the 70s and 80s, based on beautiful music. Uh, these are my uh, my favorite plays. And you actually sponsor a, a big ballet. I mean, the biggest ballet company yeah. in in Holland. Yeah. You actually you finance the. Yeah. Uh, which I think is great. I mean, you, you actually invest in the things you believe in and yeah. the things you like, which is, I think, very important. To, you know, it's your way of giving back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you have any questions from the public? You actually covered everything. Wow. I only have one question. Um, you mentioned that it wasn't really much of a risk um, to cover Galatz in 1999 because you've already tested it. That's kind of true. However, uh, you had to invent like a sort of language in order for them to actually understand what and how you uh, build ships for Daman, because uh, as far as I know, they built ships in the Soviet way. Yeah, that's right. You know, the, so the, the shipbuilding uh, uh, technically also was very well well done. I mean, I think also during Soviet time. Uh, but it was not uh, always efficient enough. Yeah? Uh, it was, I mean, that was, I think, typical in the communistic time that not always looked at the, more, uh, the most efficient way of doing something. So what we, what we in Galatz changed a lot was that we uh, 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 divided the yard uh, to uh, uh, steel, the steel part, and to the uh, assembling of, uh, of the ship. And that we, uh, uh, departments like painting, like uh, carpenting, like electrical work, like uh, piping, we uh, we introduced uh, 
companies from outside to take over our departments and to be our subcontractor. And that's much more easy for a company to, to, to control your cost when a lot of your costs are done by subcontractors. You just can easily compare them. So we reduce more or less our own activities by, uh, by, uh, by uh, uh, bringing our departments to, uh, to uh, other companies with, with the security for our people to uh, to have uh, to have that to keep the job etc but that 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 was a, a major uh, change i think in uh, in uh, in Galatz. mr damen um you are a very well dressed man yeah. i can see that but i have a little present for you it's oh. it's a shirt okay it's a shirt with romanian uh, okay. motifs oh, I see this, yeah. and, it, and it's red but it's not for girls it's actually for men it's it yeah. is it, yeah. it's a yeah. very manly shirt so. yeah. This is my present to you. Thank you for thank you for believing in our country and thank you for for uh, for believing in the people here. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, guys. Yeah. I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a, uh, something to learn from this interview, Mr. Damen. Oh, thank you very much for uh, taking interest in uh, in uh, in, in Damen and uh, myself. So it is also uh, I think nice for myself to uh, to uh, to, uh, to uh, be more. Uh, known by the Romanian uh, public because we are a very large uh, company in, uh, in, uh, in Romania and we need also support of the Romanian political. That means also by uh, Romanian people. And we also like to have uh, good people first to come to work with us. So uh, to being known a little bit better in Romania is uh, good for them, I think. So guys, now you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Have a great day. <coughs> See you in the next one.